Hi, this is Wale Oluwade. Today I will be speaking on the company of giant killers. Sometimes the chroniclers of history do great injustice to the undiscerning about some of our great heroes. David was, that's King David, he was and still is great, but his greatness was only made possible by some critical factors. And one of these was his team or inner circle. One of the, of, the, of, the, of the critical factors that made David a great man, you know, one of these critical factors was his team. His team, the, the team he surrounded himself with or his inner circle. David was a giant killer, but he became extremely great. His greatness was and still persists because he walked in the company of, giant, of, of greater giant killers than himself. Now, I need to give you a brief description of David's inner circle which is as stated, you know, in, in, in the scriptures in 2 Samuel chapter 23 from verse 8 to, you know, to 37. Now, these were the heads of the mighty men. They are called mighty men. You know, David's core, core team of inner circle consisted of 30 mighty men. They were, they were, you know, a multitude. But out of this multitude of soldiers that David had, he chose, he selected 30 Specially, and these 30, he further subdivided them into three, three each. Ten groups, 30 divided into ten places, three each. Now, the first three, let me give a, a rundown. What qualified these 30 to be in David's elite corps? If this was the United States Army, these 30 would be called Navy SEALs. And even this, I mean, the top three, what qualified them? What did they bring to the table? What qualified them to be admitted into David's, into King David's core team, you know, of, 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 of soldiers? Number one, Jeshobim, he was called Adino the Ezenite because he had killed 800 men at one time. This guy, the head, the, 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 the best of the best, this guy had killed 800 Philistine soldiers at one time alone. Number two, Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Haohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines, where they gathered there for battle. And the men of Israel had retreated. The men of Israel, you know, ran away from the Philistines. But this guy stationed himself, attacked the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand got stuck to the sword. Eleazar's palm got stuck to the handle of the sword. He alone defeated the army of the Philistines and Israel only came after him to plunder. The number three guy, you know, his name, you know, is called Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. The same thing happened that happened with Eleazar, happened here. They, 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 they were in battle, the Philistines, I mean the Jews, had run away from the Philistines. This guy stationed himself, defeated them, and the Jews only came after him to plunder. I'm saying this was what qualified this guy to be in David's elite corps of soldiers. And now, let's look at, I mean, these three guys again, a day came when David was hiding in the cave in Hadula, and David said with, with longing, oh, I wish you guys, anybody could get me a drink of water from the well that was stationed, that was at Bethlehem. Guess what? The Philistine army were, were by that well, you know, by the gates in Bethlehem. Now, these three guys, Jeshobim, um, and Eleazar, you know, and, and, and Shammah, they went there, the, the, a battalion of soldiers consists of between 500 and 800, you know, soldiers, and, and a brigade of soldiers consists of about three or five, you know, battalions. And I think this is a brigade. So we're talking about about, I mean, five, you know, battalions. So making about 4,000 soldiers. Why? Because number one, the number one guy alone had single-handedly, you know, killed 800 men. So I believe this. This brigade of Philistines that were stationed by the well, there about 4,000 soldiers. And these three guys broke through this brigade of Philistine soldiers, fetched water from the well, and brought it to David. And David would not drink it. David said, how dare I drink this kind of water? Because this is like the blood of this man. Because these men have put their lives in jeopardy for, 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 to get this water. So David would not drink the water. Rather, he poured the water, you know, onto the ground in worship and adoration of the Lord. This was what made this man, you know, spectacular and extraordinary. Let's look at the number fourth, you know, person. Abishai, the brother of Job who, the, the son of Zeruah, was chief of another three. He lifted his spear against 300 men, killed them, and won a name among these three. Was he, was he not the most honored of the three? This guy, Abishai, 
alone killed 300 men. And that's what made him to become the, the, of the second group of three. It was, their, it was their top, it was their captain. The second person in this second group of three is Benaiah. He, he was the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man from Kabzil, who had done many deeds. He had killed a two, he had killed two lion-like heroes of Moab. He also had gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. And he killed an Egyptian, a spectacular man. The Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but this guy, Benaiah, had only a, a staff or a stick. And he used the stick to wrestle the spear from the hands of this Egyptian and used the Egyptian spear to kill him. Now, so this was what qualified these guys, you know, to be in David's elite core of soldiers. His inner circle, his inner team, this was what qualified them to be admitted into his inner team. It was not sentiment, it was not tribe, it was not race, it was not language. It was their competence, their demonstrable capacity and competence, competence to deliver. Listen to the way they were described. The mighty men, helpers in the war, armed with bows, using both the right hand and the left in hurling stones and, and shooting arrows with the bow. Describing them further, mighty men of valor, men trained for battle, men trained for battle, who could handle shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of lions and were as swift as gazelles on the mountains. Their faces were like the faces of lions and they were, they were as swift as gazelles on the mountain. These were not the kind of men you fool around with. These were not clowns or jokers. They were serious-minded people. And that's what made David to become so great. Because he surrounded himself with mighty people. You know, they were not giants in terms of their physical size. They were giants because they had a big mind. They, they were daring. They were bold. They were giants in their heart. So they had a big heart. You know, so, they, and I've said all of this to say to you. So who are the people in your inner circle? I said all of this to, to ask you now. Who are the people in your inner circle? Do you surround yourself with little men so they can tickle your prickly ears with vain platitudes and boost your fragile, albeit oversized ego? If that's the case, whatever you're trying to do, it will never be done. You're trying to build a business, you're trying to grow a church, you're trying to, you know, get political office, but then you feel comfortable surrounding yourself with little men, with small-minded people, you know, so they could tickle your, 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 massage your ego, you know, tickle your ears, sing your praises, be psychophants. Whatever you're trying to do with those kind of people, it will never be done. And I'm sorry if I sound a bit ash, but I have to tell you the truth. I have to be brutally honest with you. I mean, look at Nigeria as a case study. Look at Nigeria as a case study. It, it, it's, it's a classic case study in how not to govern a nation. Why? Because Nigeria's leadership cadre is, is, is made up substantially, not all of them, but substantially from the local, you know, to the state, to the federal. The leadership cadre is substantially made up of little men, small men with, with small results. Those who celebrate, you know, building, I mean, isolation centers and all those kind of silly stuff. Small men with small results. So, I mean, if you're, if you're going to do mighty exploits, <laughs> I've just described briefly a pattern or a template of the kinds of people you need in your team. Well, the truth is, if this were a bottled drink, what I just described, I just uncocked the bottle. So, if you, if you want to get the full menu, you know, of this training outline, because, I mean, this is a complete training outline. If you want to get a, a, the, the full training outline, you need to reach out to me. Whether you are, you are into, you are, you, are, you are a medium, small and micro enterprises, you are the head of an MDA, you know, you are a politician, whatever you, you are into. You could be a conglomerate or a multinational and you, 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 you have people, you need to, you know, train your, 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 your human resource. You need to get across to me. You know, this is what I do for a living. I trained. You heard that the, the, the men around David, they were trained for battle. They didn't just happen. They were trained. You know, so this is what I do. I train. I'm a trainer. I train human resources. So you need to get across to me. You know, whether you are a one-man business thinking of hiring or you have 10 or 100 or 1,000 staff and you are interested in how to get them to deliver extreme or gravity-defined performance from your human resource, then you need to reach out to me. You can reach me via my Facebook, Twitter, you know, or Instagram. You know, just use my name. I mean, you can reach me. Drop me a mail and I'll get across to you. We can have a conversation.